the best of marble floorings, luxury fittings, a star-rated green project, acres of lawns and so on. You go looking for such specifications in the property you want to buy. But even though this will be the costliest and the longest investment of your life, you hardly spend any time to check whether that project is structurally designed and built to withstand an earthquake or any other natural disaster. As Vasudha Sharma finds out, even the industry is in the dark with respect to building earthquake-resistant housing and even our codes lack the spine. Take a look. About 15 months back, the National Disaster Management Authority had claimed that India's Himalayan belt had developed enough strains to cause an earthquake of 8 or a higher magnitude that will end at least 8 to 9 lakh lives. The question therefore is not when an earthquake will strike, but if an earthquake strikes, will our homes still be standing? The answer to that lies in India's building code which according to experts hasn't kept pace with the kind of structures being built today. The Bureau of Indian Standards has not updated the National Building Code for the last 10 years. There exists no mechanism in the building codes for safety certification of buildings from natural disasters. And the most alarming gap is the absence of a specialized seismic code for tall multi-story buildings which means anything from 10 floors to say 50 floors is treated the same in the code. Earthquake engineering expert Sandeep Shah's petition in the Supreme Court challenged the Indian government's lack of preparedness in the event of an earthquake. Shah alleges inaction by the NDMA towards strengthening the building codes and disseminating life-saving information to the public. NDMA in 2010 had spoken of categorizing buildings on the basis of their performance levels just like green buildings are rated on their savings. The highest level is called fully operational. Such buildings do not encounter any damage and can continue functioning even during an earthquake. The second performance level is immediate occupancy. Such buildings develop minor cracks but can remain operational after the earthquake. The third performance level is life safety. A building of this performance will be significantly damaged but does not reach the state of collapse and can be made functional after retrofitting. And the last performance level is collapse prevention. Such buildings suffer major damage and will witness imminent collapse. But even five years since, these guidelines have still not been incorporated in the seismic code which at present only prescribes buildings to achieve the minimum level of collapse prevention. Every Indian citizen should be knowing that the building he is purchasing or renting or even the building he is entering in for a meeting, to attend a meeting, what category of earthquake resistant it is. Just this information, without you having done anything on the structure, just this information will save lakhs and millions of people because they will exactly know how they are supposed to react when the earthquake strikes. And once they do it, their lives will be saved. In recent months, the NDMA long criticised for having become a parking lot for the retired has swung into action. The centre has appointed domain experts to bring in fresh energy into the NDMA and in recent weeks has initiated a complete rewrite of the building code. Retrofitting of existing buildings is being studied and latest seismic safety concepts are being considered. But experts warn that such efforts will still collapse if the enforcement is weak. There is a feeling amongst almost everybody that these codes should be uh, legally binding for all these stakeholders, especially the builders. Uh, there is uh, right now uh, no such provision. Uh, but what we need probably to do is we have to categorize these into two parts. One is the codes and other is the specifications. Codes should be legally binding and specifications should form as a guidelines. NDMA's other ambitious reform was to establish a techno-financial regime where loan applications will be decided upon after the government or lending institution undertakes a structural audit of the proposed or existing construction. But even this has been scuttled in a debate with the Reserve Bank of India. The most critical reform needed today is how we'll retrofit our existing building stock and how we'll get people to demand homes that are built to last. With camera persons Prem Singh and Pooja Arya, Vasudha Sharma, NDTV.